the southwestern tip of Africa lies one of the most spectacular parks on Earth. Surrounded by the vast Atlantic Ocean and the growing metropolis of Cape Town. It is home to an extraordinary diversity of plants and animals. Many exist nowhere else. This is an extreme and unforgiving environment. At its core is one of the world's most iconic mountains. This is Table Mountain National Park. Table Mountain is one of the natural wonders of the world. Its flat top is formed by a cap of super-hardened sandstone that has resisted millions of years of erosion. The mountain is the northernmost extent of one of Africa's most diverse parks. From here, Table Mountain National Park extends south along a rugged spine of mountains to the end of the peninsula at Cape Point. Two hundred and twenty one square kilometers of incredible diversity. Containing more than two thousand plant species. 90 of which exist nowhere else in the world. This sanctuary is surrounded on all sides, by ocean or by humanity. 1,000 meter peaks stand with their feet in the sea. Two sharply contrasting worlds on land and in the ocean. Cold, dry winds and deep ocean currents drive upwelling along this coast, drawing valuable nutrients to the surface, resulting in rich waters teeming with life. But on land, conditions are very different. The winds that bring life to the waters below buffet the mountains, desiccating the landscape and stunting the vegetation. Dry and windswept, just surviving here is a struggle. Just about every plant and animal is adapted to overcome this harsh world. Orange-breasted sunbirds flit between flowers in a partnership critical to both species' survival. Where only the toughest species can eke out her living on the land, in contrast, below the waves, in the rich seas, life is abundant. Seals play a life and death game of hide and seek in the offshore forests. And an unusual colony of African penguins thrives. All protected within Table Mountain's incredible natural sanctuary. For plants and animals alike, living here is a story of life on the edge. It's midsummer, and an unlikely family has come down to the beach near Cape Point to escape the heat. Chakma baboons, the southernmost primate in Africa, apart from humans. 
one of the world's largest monkeys, males can weigh nearly 45 kilograms. They are remarkably resourceful and occur across southern Africa in a range of habitats, from forests and grasslands to savanna and semi-deserts. each month during extreme low tides, they come down to the shore in order to forage among the exposed rocks. This gives them a valuable survival edge in an unforgiving park. They're one of only a few baboon families in the world whose lifestyle straddles both land and sea. The Cape Peninsula is an isolated stretch of land jutting out into the mighty Atlantic Ocean. It is one of the windiest spots in the world. Gales blow roughly 100 days a year. This makes life on land harsh, but it brings a bounty to the ocean. Southeasterly winds and deep oceanic currents bring cold, nutrient-rich water to the surface in a process called upwelling. These nutrients, together with sunlight, fuel one of the most productive habitats on the planet. Giant kelp forests, with plants towering over 12 meters, thrive. With plenty of food available, the only limiting factor is a place to call your own. Space is at a premium, so there is fierce competition for it. Fish, such as this red Roman, are territorial. Males jealously guard their patch. And to avoid competition, they have a trick up their sleeves. Young are all born female. When the territorial male dies, the largest female changes sex and takes over his territory. Seven gill cow sharks also patrol these forests. A member of one of the planet's most ancient shark lineages, they hide from predators such as great whites during the day in the forest. Cape fur seals, another of the great whites' favored prey items, also find shelter in the kilt beds. In the relative safety of this underwater haven, there's plenty of time for mischief. Relentless winds that contribute to the upwelling in the ocean, making it one of the most fertile ecosystems on the planet, also dictate conditions on land, but in the opposite way. The vegetation blanketing the park is called feinbos, translated as fine bush. It gets its name from the delicate leaves of many of its plants, which help them to conserve water.
Feinbos forms part of the incredibly diverse Cape Floristic region. This region is second only to tropical forests in terms of diversity, although it is only a fraction of the size. Covering only 90,000 square kilometers, the Cape holds more than 9,000 plant species, almost 70% of which live nowhere else. More plant species than the United Kingdom. Feinbos is characterized by four iconic plant types. Ericas, identifiable by their tiny needle-like leaves. Reed-like restios. Large shrubby proteas with showy flowers. And geophytes with their underground storage organs. The soils of Table Mountain National Park are sandy and hold few nutrients and limited water. Where soils are poor, growing leaves is costly. So plants need to deter animals from eating them. For this, they fill their leaves with chemicals called tannins, which make them bitter and indigestible. Although the landscape appears to be covered with edible vegetation, most of it is not. This family of Cape Mountain Zebra are searching for food on the open plains north of Cape Point. They are the smallest zebra species, easily distinguished from other zebras by the fold of skin under their necks, known as a dewlap. They specialize in living in dry, rocky environments. They're searching for new grass shoots. Irland, the largest antelope in the world, also rely on isolated patches of grass that grow in a few places amongst the unpalatable Feinbos. Bontevok are found only in this part of South Africa and can survive on Feinbos alone. But they take full advantage of Table Mountain's grazing lawns to boost their diet. For nearly all land animals, finding food in this barren landscape is a constant challenge. The baboon troops often have to make do with what they can find high on the meager landscape of the peninsula. But this troop is led by an experienced alpha male and he knows where to look. Plants with underground storage organs such as bulbs and tubers, known as geophytes, are common in the park. These store water and carbohydrates underground in order to survive the park's hot, dry summers. But not all geophytes are good eating. March lilies appear in late summer all over the peninsula. The bulbs of these beautiful plants are highly toxic, able to kill a grown man.
Being a big-brained primate gives these baboons an advantage in this tough landscape. Family life is important. Youngsters not only learn from their parents, but spend hours playing. This builds relations between family members. Subordinates often groom dominant members to gain acceptance, and females gain protection for their young. Youngsters, too, always have an eye out for opportunities to get on top. One species in the park that comes out on top more often than not is the rock hyrax, known locally as Darcy's. They are found throughout the park on rocky outcrops, and this family are kings of their castle. Their home is on the iconic Flat Mountain. Darcy's may look suspiciously like guinea pigs, but they are not rodents at all. As unlikely as it seems, DNA evidence shows their closest living relatives are elephants. Agama lizards are also adapted to life here. Like all cold-blooded animals, they cannot regulate their own body temperatures and rely on the sun's heat to warm their bodies so they spend large amounts of time lying on exposed, sunny surfaces. This makes them easy targets for birds of prey, such as rock kestrels. Most species are camouflaged to blend in with the rock. But the black girdled lizard stands out. It's a dangerous trade-off. The lizard is more visible to predators, but being darker helps it absorb the maximum amount of heat. Dassies too enjoy sunning themselves. They are one of only a few warm-blooded mammals capable of using the sun's heat to increase their body temperature and aid their metabolism. This also exposes them to larger predators, such as this jackal buzzard. But Darcy's are expert rock jumpers. Small stubby toes with hoof-like nails make rock jumping easy. A special secretion keeps their rubbery feet permanently moist. They also have a collapsible rib cage, perfect for squeezing into small rock crevices to escape danger. Of all their adaptations, however, it is possibly their ability to tackle a variety of food that gives them the greatest advantage in this park. A multi-chambered stomach filled with symbiotic bacteria enables them to eat the otherwise unpalatable leaves of Fainbos. Most of the year, Fainbos tries to keep animals at bay to prevent grazing. But for some species, animals are critically important for pollination. And to attract these animals, 
plants produce lots of nectar. Growing leaves is expensive because it requires nutrients that are in short supply in the soils of Table Mountain National Park. But while leaves are expensive, producing nectar is cheap. All it takes is sunlight and a little water. It's early morning. The flowers are full of nectar and sunbirds are feasting. Orange-breasted sunbirds exist only in the Fainbos. They play a crucial role in the ecosystem. Flitting from flower to flower, feeding on nectar, they become dusted with pollen, which they transfer from plant to plant, fertilizing the flowers. Southern double-collared sunbirds are also drawn by the spoils on offer. Proteas, South Africa's iconic national flower, are shrubby plants and they attract another larger bird. Cape sugarbirds, so named for their love of nectar. Their tail is long and cumbersome. But females are attracted by impressive tails. The longer the tail, the better the male's potential as a mate. Some birds are also enjoying the sugary spoils. But they unwittingly cheat the protea out of its nectar. Being small, they can't reach into the depths of the plant from above, like the sugar birds, and are not dusted with pollen. This is bad news for the plant. Their only reliable pollinators are sugar birds. While more than 400 species of Fainbos plants rely on birds to enable them to produce seeds, these are not the only pollinators. Cape honeybees love nectar and rely heavily on flowers to get it. also play a vital pollinating role in the Fainbos ecosystem. Their proboscis is an airtight straw-like tube that sucks up nectar. An electrostatic charge on the fine hairs that cover their body and legs helps them collect pollen. pollinators in the park, perhaps the most unusual is the striped field mouse. 
Around the world, pollination by rodents is extremely rare. But mice are attracted to proteas because the flowers produce large volumes of nectar. In the Feinbos, more than 35 plant species depend on this rare relationship. Living in a windy place can be a hindrance, but some plants have come to depend on it. Restios, another major plant group of the Feinbos, are wind pollinated. They don't have beautiful showy flowers because they don't need to attract pollinators with fancy petals or tasty nectar. Their pollinator is indiscriminate, but everywhere. Wind pollination is not as precise as animal pollination, but it's still highly effective in this wind-driven ecosystem. Wind not only helps to renew life on land, it also brings nutrients to the ocean surface, enabling sea life to flourish. Table Mountain National Park is home to a rare marine character. The African penguin. It's breeding season in the Boulders Beach colony on the eastern shores of the park. This is one of only three mainland breeding colonies in Africa. Ordinarily, African penguins prefer to breed on offshore islands but humans destroyed their traditional homes by stripping guano off these islands for fertilizer in the early 1900s. With no guano, the breeding penguins had nowhere to dig their burrows and shelter their chicks. In addition, commercial fishing has stripped the oceans of food for penguins. Historically, there were an estimated two million breeding pairs in southern Africa. Today, fewer than 25,000 survive. The species is hanging on by the finest of threats. And the Boulders Beach penguins are at the forefront of the struggle. It is one of the only colonies growing in number. Not only is the breeding colony protected, the surrounding waters of False Bay are also closed to commercial fishing, meaning food is plentiful. Penguins are not the only flightless bird benefiting from the sanctuary of the park. It's midsummer, the driest time of the year. This is the hottest day that Cape Point has experienced in a hundred years, a sweltering 43 degrees Celsius. Feinbos offers little shade, and birds do not have the ability to sweat in order to cool down. This ostrich is feeling the heat. So he's opening his mouth and rapidly moving air over a capillary-filled pouch in his throat in order to cool his blood. This is called gular fluttering, similar to panting dogs. He also spreads his wings, allowing the wind to fan the thin skin beneath reduces his core temperature.
The Bontebok are also taking strain in the exposed landscape. Males are highly territorial, and even in the heat, their priority is to assert dominance. There are places in the park where the desiccating winds actually benefit plants and animals. On the summit, the southeasterly wind has formed a cloud known to locals as the mountain's tablecloth. The lower slopes are parched, but this thick cloud brings some relief to the park's higher elevations. Water condensing out of the air is just enough to refresh the last trickling streams. These are home to an orchid called the Red Dyser. Dyser's can tolerate hot summer temperatures, but they need moisture and humidity. and so can only survive in these permanent streams. Cape rivers are best known for their dark water. The bitter tannins Feinbos plants use to deter herbivores leach into the rivers, creating a tea-like color. Even here, in this moist environment, life is tough. Sundews are carnivorous plants that can survive in these nutrient-poor soils. The droplets on their leaves are sweet secretions. Insects are trapped by this sticky substance, and the plant uses enzymes to digest them and absorb the nutrients. The permanent streams allow green pockets of life to survive on an unforgiving mountain. Afro-Montane forest covers just 4% of the park and is a refuge for a number of unusual species. Perhaps the most precious of all is the Table Mountain Ghost Frog, one of the rarest amphibians on the planet. The entire world's population lives in just six ravines on the eastern side of the mountain. It is seldom seen, living a secretive existence in these perennial streams. This frog has just metamorphosed from a tadpole. He still has a lot of growing to reach his adult size of five centimeters. Ghost frogs are perfectly adapted to this habitat. Flattened bodies allow them to crawl between narrow crevices. Webbed feet make them excellent swimmers. Sticky discs on their toes help them cling to rock faces and their mottled green and brown appearance is ideal camouflage. The tadpoles are also adapted to life in fast-flowing streams. Their huge mouth acts as a strong sucker, allowing them to hang onto rocks while slowly feeding on algae. Tadpoles take a whole year to develop to adulthood. The ghost frog is a specialist and is unable to traverse large distances between suitable habitats and therefore exists nowhere else. 
Further downstream, a curious character also finds refuge. A Cape Dwarf Chameleon, native to the southwestern corner of South Africa. Unlike ghost frogs, Table Mountain's extreme specialist, the secret of this chameleon's success is its adaptability. It can survive everywhere, from fynbos and forest to urban gardens. Large individuals, such as this one, can grow up to 19 centimeters in length. Chameleons are important predators. With gripping feet and a prehensile tail, they are adapted to life in the trees. Their eyes work independently, allowing them to scan different directions at the same time. Even expert hunters can sometimes miss the shot. It's this grasshopper's lucky day. But persistence pays. Afro-montane forests are tucked away in moist ravines protected from the dangers of increasingly hot and dry conditions on the exposed slopes. By the end of summer, Table Mountain National Park is a tinderbox. One stray spark is all that it takes to ignite the mountain. Once alight, runaway fires rapidly destroy everything in their path. not able to escape are consumed by the flames. But fire has always been a natural part of this landscape and it plays a pivotal role in the Feinbos ecosystem. In only a matter of days new growth starts to appear. Protea bushes in particular are fire adapted. Some protect themselves with thick bark and then re-sprout once the fire has passed. Others are stimulated by the flames to release their seeds. Smoke, heat or charred wood also triggers the growth of seeds and bulbs buried in the ground. Ironically, the burnt landscape is perfect for new seedlings. With the dominant adult plants gone, there is no competition for space or water. And the nutrients once stored in living vegetation now lie as highly fertile ash on the ground. Like a phoenix rising from the ashes, Feinbos is reborn after each fire. Table Mountain National Park's rugged 100-kilometer coastline 
is a sharp divide between Feinbos struggling under the onslaught of summer and cold waters full of life. In order to survive on Table Mountain, every species needs to be able to tip the scales in their favor, and none are better at seizing new opportunities than the mountain's baboon troops. By the end of the hot season, kelp beds are bloated with life. Older plants become dislodged by swells rising out of the southern ocean. Washing ashore, it's a valuable resource. Beach hoppers, crustaceans distantly related to lobsters and crabs, have specially adapted gills, allowing them to breathe air. They are effective scavengers, removing tons of washed up kelp in a matter of days. The Cape Point troop of Chakma baboons are also making the most of the smorgasbord on the shore. They have learned that there is a feast to be had if you know where to look. When conditions are right, they come down from their mountainside home for an early morning seafood buffet. Spring low tide is best. When rocks are exposed far down the beach, covered in mussels and limpets. This is one of the only places in the world where baboons are known to do this. Shellfish are an incredible source of protein. These baboons spend only about 5% of their time feasting at the shore. But the nutrition they gain is invaluable. It is thought that this same protein source also helped fuel human development hundreds of thousands of years ago. There is evidence that some of our earliest ancestors ate large amounts of seafood along these shores, fueling the growth of a bigger brain. Just like the earliest human ancestors, baboons have adapted to make the most of the opportunities provided by this challenging landscape, gaining a valuable survival edge on this unforgiving peninsula. Table Mountain National Park is a land of contrasts, driven by fire and wind. It is harsh on land. Despite this, a number of plants and animals thrive. Forming partnerships critical for their survival. A wealth of species that are found nowhere else. The surrounding oceans teem with life. Fed by nutrient-rich waters upwelled from the deep. 
there is plenty of food for a multitude of plants and animals. This is an island of diversity and wonder, hemmed in by humanity and surrounded by ocean. Table Mountain National Park is a place like no other.